We've had another new product arrive from Italy. Can you guess who it is? I'm going to show you very, very quickly. There we go. There's the box. Look at that. You've guessed it. M2 Tech. Now, before we go any further, I would like to stress that I have had to pay for this box. Not just the box, but also what came in the box. This has not been sent free of charge by M2 Tech. They have not asked me to review this product. They have not, as I say, supplied it free of charge. All the products that you see on the Eden Audio YouTube channel are all paid for. And this includes this box here. Now, you want to know what's inside this box, don't you? But first of all, before I'm going to tell you what's inside this box, I found it very interesting when I saw this box that when you look at it, M2 Tech's logo and slogan says, Music has changed. How do you feel about that? Has music changed? Well, it probably has really, hasn't it? I think music's probably sort of gone a little bit downhill to me personally, as I've mentioned in previous uploads that I've made that I find today's music not to be that wonderful sounding particularly. So in that aspect, I could say, yes, music has changed. But something that really has changed, and I think now we're into the oh, core cool blimey stage, and that is the hi-fi pricing. I think you need to do a sort of double take when you take a look at some of the pricing of some of the latest gear that's on show the hi-fi shows it's really quite eye-watering isn't it so i don't know about music has changed but you can definitely say hi-fi pricing has changed and that's the beauty for me of m2 tech that their pricing is still extremely affordable because the quality that you get from m2 tech really is outstanding i must say that all the products i've received from m2 tech i've found them to be exceptional value for money and really really high sound quality so when i ordered the joplin 3 i really was expecting something quite special now the joplin 3 is a normally when we think of digital products we think of digital to analog converters don't we a DAC well this is slightly different because this is a analog to digital converter what's that well that is when you take the analog signal i.e from say for example a turntable so your vinyl records and you want to convert them into digital i.e you want to transfer them onto say a hard disk or your computer or a portable disk or whatever so this is what we've got here from m2 tech and it's a very very special product because it allows you to record straight into your computer in 32 bits. So you've got 32 bits, 384. That, that frequency and that um, bit range is only available, as I say, from the USB port. So it enables you to record such high quality recordings of your vinyl onto your computer. The downside to this is that it's going to create one huge size file. So that's one thing to bear in mind. If you are going to record at 32-bit 384, you are going to end up with a very, very large file size. Unfortunately, that's the downside. Well, I'm going to open up this box. We're going to have a look in it. And then later, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little test. I'm going to show you, for example, as, as you're well aware, I've received recently two dual turntables. I've received an entry-level turntable and I've received sort of another turntable that's right at the top of their range. I think it's the third one down. So I thought it'd be quite interesting if we could do a sound sample of how the entry-level sound of the dual range, the CS440, compare that to the CS526. And it sort of gives us a good idea when it comes to spending our money. Is it worth spending more money on a higher higher price turntable. We're going to find that out and we're going to put the Joplin Mark III through its paces. So I think that's really something to look forward to. Now we just received another new device from M2 Tech. I say we've been very very impressed with the previous products that we have received from the company and I must stress yet again that this is a paid for product by myself. It hasn't been sent for free by M2 Tech, it has, as I say, been paid for. And what we've got here in front of us is the Joplin Mark III. What is the Joplin Mark III? Well, what it is, it's not a digital to analog converter, it's the other way around, it's an analog to digital converter. So what that means is that you can play your vinyl records and you can record them or rip them straight to your computer. You also, there is no need for, no need for a phono stage is pretty good. As I say, it's a lovely high-tech piece of kit. 
and it will make the best of the recordings that you can make, as I say, from your vinyl records. Say you want to rip your vinyl records and store them on the hard disk or a portable disk directly to your computer. Now I'm going to explain a little bit to you about the device as that. It's quite complicated at first, but once you got used to it, like all things, it's quite simple to use in operation. But again, once again, I do recommend to you that when it comes to M2 Tech products, is have a good read of the manual beforehand so exactly you've got a good idea of what's in front of you and how you use the little device you've got so i've got a little bit of paper here to help assist me in this because i say it's quite a lot of information to take in about this product so number one here to the very left hand side this is obviously quite obvious what that is that's the power on and off and the exit button then just to its right hand side here we have this little blue LED and that is where you put this here which I've also got in my hand the remote control for the device it's a very simple device but it controls everything you need to do to control the M2 Tech Joplin Mark III so just above that we've got the standby LED and when we do turn it on, I'm going to switch the device on so you can have a look at it for yourself. There it goes, there it comes on. And we've got a beautiful OLED display there. And here we have VU meters. And here, obviously, we have the knob that controls everything. Now, to set the device up, I say it is fairly simple. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how we do that. What we do is, say for example, if we give it one press, it gives us to the gain. Now we need to look at our cartridge so we know more or less how we need to set our gain up. The device does come set at 30, but with the autophone that I've got connected up, it allows me to go to 41 on the gain. Now what this means is it allows me to control the volume of the device. So for example, if I go to 41 here, the gain at 41, if I press it again, I've got the input of analog, which is obviously the input for the turntable, but going back to the 41, we've got 41 here, it will show me when it's clipping. So when I'm recording, if I set it at 41, it will tell me when I'm clipping. So for example, I go to 42 or 43, then it will show here below a warning sign that it's actually clipping. So at 41, for the particular cartridge that I've got, set at 41, it won't clip while I'm making my recordings, if that all makes sense to you. So I say we've got gain set at 41 for the autophone cartridge that I've got here. Then we've got the input, which is obviously from the turntable, so that's analog. Then we've got, we can choose the sampling rate. So say for example, we connect it up to our computer, directly to our computer, we can use the 3A4 setting. However, if we go directly to the preamplifier, then we are unable to use 3A4. So 3A4 is only for a USB connection only, so please bear that in mind. You can only use the sampling rate of 384 when connected to a computer, so only through USB output. Moving along, we've got resolution 32-bit, resolution 24-bit, resolution 20-bit, dithered, 16-bit, and 16-bit dithered as well. So that's all fairly simple. So that's the sampling rate. We've got 384, 352.8, 192k, 176.4k, 96k. Move it a little bit slower. 96k, 88.2k, 48k, 44.1, which is obviously for CD. And that's it for that. Moving along a little bit further. So this is the clip level. So really when we're recording we want to set that to minus two decibel and that will allow us to know when a recording that we're making is whether or not it's clipping. So we really don't want to have too much clipping do we? We don't have distortion as that's not going to sound particularly nice. So we want to keep it so the recording that we're making is not actually clipping. So say we can set that quite easily. We just move the dial there. Zero, minus one, minus two. They do recommend between minus two or minus three when you're doing your recordings. So say around there, minus six, etc. So for me, for my recordings, minus one or minus two is perfect for getting a really good recording. Now, another beautiful thing 
about this device is the equalization. Let me go around again. Sometimes I press it a bit too much and I go past it. So we've got gain, input, sampling rate, resolution, clip level. The next one is equalization. Now we've got a lot of choices when it comes to our, uh, to equalization. For example, most of my records are R, I, A, A. That's going a bit too quickly there for me. Let's say, let's go through them. We've got R, I, A, A, which is the most common one. A, E, S, Angel, Audio File. Bartok, Capital, what's that one there? Columbia, HMV, Decca, FFRR, MGM, NAB, Pacific Jazz, Philips, RCA Type 1, RCA Type 2, RCA Autophonic, Brunswick, Columbia 1925, Columbia 1938, Columbia England, Decca, FFRR 78, MGM 78, Victor 1938, Victor 1947, IEC 19CM-S. Oh, well, it goes on and on. So you've got all these choices of equalizations depending on the type of record you've got. As I say, most of my records are sort of fairly modern from the 80s, so I use RIAA for my equalization. As I say, it looks a little bit complicated when you first look at it. But I say it's fairly simple stuff. Just to go through it again. Gain, input, Sampling rate, resolution, your clip level for your recordings, your equalization. We've got another couple here which I don't really touch. Display auto off, high pass filter, I leave that off. Low pass filter, I also leave that off. MPX, I leave that off. I2S out mode, I'm not using that, so I leave that off. Output format PS audio, I leave that off. DSD channel swap off. And obviously I'm using the remote control, so that is on. And that's sort of obviously about the firmware. So back to gain. Again, as I say, just to mention, to go to recap for you, it depends on the cartridge that you're using, however you set your gain up. You can hear it for yourself when it's distorting. I say for the cartridge that I've got at the moment, 41 is fine. I say this device then connects up to the preamplifier, which I'm going to show you right now. If we take a look at the rear, of the Joplin, we can see all the connections that are available for us. Looking at these two cables here first, these are the analog cables, the left and right, and these are coming from the turntable. So the cables that come from the output of the turntable, we connect them here up to the Joplin 3. So these two here have come from the turntable. The cable above it, GND, that stands for ground. So the ground cable from the turntable, we connect to the Joplin 3 here. We connect this cable up so that we don't get huzzies and um, huzzies? What's huzzies? Buzzes and hums. So we don't want buzzes and hums while we're listening to our music, do we? So to prevent that, we connect this ground cable up just here. To the right of that, you'll notice this little dial. What's this, you may well be asking? Well, this is for the impedance of the cartridge. It comes from the factory, right, turned right round to the right hand side and it's set at 50k now you'll probably find for most cartridges especially mn's you won't need to touch that so as i say it's set at 50k for mm cartridges that's probably ideal so you leave it in that position if you do turn it around you're feeling a bit adventurous or something you'll find that the sound becomes extremely dull and you lose a lot of treble so again leave it in that position there here just again further along to the right we have aes ebu out and here, this is the connection I use, this SPDIF, digital out. Now this runs to the Young 3 preamplifier. So as I say, all the music is in the digital domain. We also have SPDIF in, Toshlink out. And you'll notice here the USB port. This is USB 2.0. Now this is where you connect the Joplin to your computer, to your PC, to make your recordings. Let's say through this port, you get 32-bit 384 only. Only by using this port can you get those sampling rates, not by connecting it to the Young 3. So again, bear that in mind. Here we have the I2S DSD out. And of course, here we have the 15-volt DC in where you can, again, upgrade it at a later date by adding an M2 Tech um, dedicated linear power supply. So again, that's the rear. 
of the M2 Tech. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, but they're the connections you need to make to get yourself up and running. Again, bear that in mind. That's the connection you use to make your recordings, and that's how you get your 32-bit, 384 only recordings. In the next upload that we're going to make then, we're going to use that Joplin Mark III from M2 Tech, and we're going to use it to record the two dual turntables, the CS440 and the CS526. Just to recap, one's an entry-level turntable, and the other one's more a higher-end turntable in the dual range. And the M2 Tech Joplin Mark III is extremely high resolution, so it should be quite easy, shouldn't it, to be able to notice the differences sonically between those two turntables. So I hope you're going to join me when I make the recordings of those two turntables that so we can hear the differences between them. Because obviously, as I said to you before, when we pay more money for a hi-fi product, the whole idea of paying more is so that we get a better sound. But before I can actually record those vinyls, the problem I've got is that most of the vinyls in my record collection, the vinyls that I collected when I was a teenager, and you know what you're like when you're a teenager, you, you don't tend to look after things that well, and that's what the case was with me with my vinyl collection. I used to sort of sprawl them all out along the floor, or I'd mishandle them, I'd get all my fingerprints all over them. So they weren't particularly well looked after. Now I'm older, I sort of regret the way I looked after my record. So what I've done, I've ordered an Okinoki. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I love that name. It does conjure up different sort of images in my head when I hear that name, Okinoki. It sounds like something else. But as I say, I've ordered an Okinoki. So hopefully that's going to give the vinyl records a nice good clean so they're all nice and sparkly. Get rid of all those pops and crackles so we'll be able to appreciate more clearly the differences that I'm hoping we're going to hear when we make the recording of those two turntables. So I hope you're going to join me once again to see that little presentation that we've got there for you. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Take care, have a great day, and I'll be speaking to you soon. Bye-bye now.